Now, lately, there's been a phrase that news organizations have been throwing around a lot. Critical race theory. Everyone is saying it, but no one seems to be able to agree on what it is. Now, how do we get to a point where everyone is saying a phrase they can't even define? Let's find out in a segment called, How Did We Get Here? In the past few weeks, several state legislatures have introduced bills banning critical race theory. They've done it in Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, Mississippi, Oklahoma, and a bunch of other states where you can buy Confederate flags at gas stations. But the thing is, while some Americans are furious about critical race theory, a lot of people don't even know what it is. And I don't blame them. Critical race theory sounds like the subtitle of a book called Mario Kart for Dummies. First, I'm going to pick up speed, then I'm going to throw some nanas, then I'm going to get some coins, and that is my critical race theory. Now, in order to talk about critical race theory, we're going to start with something called the 1619 Project. The 1619 Project is an extraordinary Pulitzer Prize winning work of journalism conceived of by a reporter named Nicole Hannah-Jones. It was released to commemorate the 400th anniversary of the arrival of enslaved Africans in the colonies that would become America. That's right, the first anniversary is paper, the fifth is wood, and the 400th is well-researched and award-winning journalism. Get to work, husbands. One of the reasons the 1619 Project has been so controversial is that it proposes that we should talk a lot more about the consequences of slavery and the contributions of black people when we talk about the foundations of our country, which of course means acknowledging that racism permeates our history. Because the fact is right now, kids aren't learning the realities of our history. In 2018, only 8% of U.S. high school seniors could identify slavery as the central cause of the Civil War. And that is horrifying. That's like only 8% of kids knowing you can make a volcano with Mentos and Diet Coke. They're both basic facts. Now, the good news is, that about two thirds of students do seem to know that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves, except, and here's the thing, it absolutely did not do that. That required a whole constitutional amendment, which wasn't even ratified till after Abraham Lincoln died in a horrible boating accident. All the 1619 Project was supposed to do is help teach students about the role slavery has played in American history. Now, some people claim that's rewriting history, and maybe it is, but shouldn't we revise things when we get better information? We used to prescribe cocaine for toothaches. Now we know better, and it's mostly used so that former lacrosse players can talk about crypto for seven hours straight. Yeah, you gotta have Bitcoin, bro. The point is, as we learn more, of course we should adjust what we're teaching. In some parts of the country, if students learn black history at all, they learn that most masters treated their slaves kindly, or slaves were given the opportunity to become Christians instead of remaining heathen, or that slaves got to eat all the barbecue Pringles they wanted. All of those things are equal parts bullshit, but the first two are actual quotes from a textbook that was used in South Carolina for 130 years, which is probably why their current senator thinks that racism doesn't exist. He thinks it disappeared right around when Daniel Boone killed all the dinosaurs. Now, this would be a great time for me to tell you what we need to do to improve our national history curriculum, but here's the thing. We don't have a national history curriculum. Every state sets its own teaching standards. Think of school curriculums like state mottos. Every state has a different one, and some of them are batshit crazy. Oregon's state motto is, she flies with her own wings. Uh, that's not a motto. That's a tagline for a cicada biopic. The fact is, most states don't mandate a specific amount of black history at all, which is why most white people only know about Harriet Tubman, Martin Luther King, and Barack Obama. Even worse, 20% of them think that that's Destiny's Child. If only there were some kind of, say, prize-winning black history curriculum developed by some of the greatest scholars in the country, I'm sure that Americans would welcome it with open arms. And by arms, I mean guns, because it turns out there are a lot of white people who really don't want to learn the truth about America. And that finally brings us back to critical race theory, which is just a way of examining society and history without pretending that racism doesn't exist. 
Racism is part of our past and our present. It's been with us for 400 years. You can't squash it into two sentences in a textbook between the Civil War and the Roaring Twenties. You shouldn't fix history to make you feel better. Learning about slavery feels awful, too bad. Try living with its repercussions while white people tell you there weren't any. Also, it should make you feel bad. It should make you feel so bad that you make sure nothing like it ever happens again. Critical race theory gives us the tools to examine our history in an open and honest way and to fix the parts of our educational system that aren't doing that. But my theory is that some white people don't wanna change our education system because it benefits them. They literally were able to become congressmen and senators and people who make laws about American history without actually knowing American history. Or maybe they're afraid that we might start treating white people like white people treat us. Maybe they don't even know they've been learning the white version of history this whole time. Anyway, that's my theory. And if it's not accurate, my theory about race will fall apart as soon as someone critically examines it. If only there was a way to do that, but I guess that's how we got here.